Hey guys, how's it going? It's January 7th today. Um, I grabbed the 720 here and I'm pulling up this uh, 16 by 104 by 104 Bueller Farm King Auger. Um, so we use these things all the time. Like this is our main operation, how we fill our grain bins. Uh, we actually have quite a few of them. But anyway, this particular one, it has the Rodono Extend. We really, we really like the Rodono Extend. Um, but the auger is actually half full. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's actually a little bit drooped, just like that. Somewhere right up at about there. Um, the flighting sheared off. Mike, what does it mean? What's flighting? Okay, so this in here, here's your flighting. So this is a fairly new auger, as you can tell, because typically this would be the highest wearing point right here. But normally this would get so sharp and worn down, it would get jagged, like this, right? So anyways, these are red lentils, and uh, during harvest, we actually kind of forgot about it. Uh, we were augering away, you know, life is good, just chugga, 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 and pop, sheared this flighting in half. Now that's the second time that's happened. First time I think to this auger, because it's fairly new. Um, so what we did is because since we were pressed for time, we actually just lifted the auger out of the bin, went down, parked it, grabbed another one, stuck it in the bin and continued on. Because you don't want to shut down seven combines because you have one auger that piled up on you, right? Right. And um, we actually forgot about it. It's just sitting down there in the snow bank and we're like, oh yeah, we forgot about that. So, um, I'm up here now, I just got a, we had this adapter on because we were running the bagger. This is actually the big thousand PTO. We just slid this little 540 adapter on to run the bagger. Got to take this off, stick the PTO back on, hopefully throw it in reverse. And uh, gonna lift the auger all the way up, go out to the field somewhere, and we're just gonna auger this in reverse and then try and empty out the auger into a pile. That's the plan. First of all, we just gotta take this adapter off. Mike, um, why, why do you have an adapter on there when you can just take out the PTO? Well, you're right, you can just, you can exchange this PTO here, you just take these bolts off right here and you can stick a 540 in there, no big deal. But uh, sometimes we just carry an adapter around with this because this takes us like literally like 60 seconds to put on, where this takes us about probably four minutes to put on. <laughs> it's all about saving time. Uh, wouldn't that throw you off your RPMs in the tractor if it's thinking that you're running a thousand here, but you're actually running a 540 here? You bet it does. You better, you better do that calculation in your head. Like, would you run uh, something like this for like a long period of time? Absolutely not. No. If I'm going to be doing anything, if I'm going to run it for even like an afternoon, I'll probably change it out. But if I only have like a little job I got to do, I'm not going to change it out. I'm just going to throw the adapter on. It's all about time and efficiency. All right. So update here. Uh, the adapter is off, um, pulled the shield off. This will now just slide out, this just pushes in and you pop this out. So I got this one pushed in and it got stuck in here, which is purposely, I wanted it like that. And as this is just a little plastic plug, so that way it just keeps it clean from dirt. So you can take this one here and move it into here and then take this little plastic plug and move it in here. This little plastic plug is proven to be a bit of a challenge. It's obviously getting hung up on these uh, little uh, balls that actually slide into this groove and that's what actually keeps it in there and of course I don't have enough really to pull on it either so uh, I'm gonna get back to you on this which is hard to stay steady working on stuff when you get called and that's perfectly understandable Brian just needed a hand here moving the conveyor in and out we're just transferring from our truck onto a commercial uh, um, custom guy so I gotta go give my hand here You got what? You're gonna move it? You want me to move it? Hop in the Kenworth. Never driven a Kenworth. It's Terry's truck. Let's see if I can see him. I can't see him. Oh, there he is. Just sneaking by here. Oh, not quite. Oh, maybe we are now. There we go. So the reason why we did this is because uh, we wanted to be proactive, get one of our trucks loaded. Um, we weren't using them all today. 
And then when the custom guys come in, oh, right there. When the custom guys come in, uh, we can just offload and it's just that much faster. And we wanted to do this because we were freshly opening up a chickpea bag. And you never know what you might be getting yourself into when you first open it. Open up any bag for that matter. So, now how do I get out of this flying umbrella? There it is. And then, at least when we get into the chickpea bag and unload it, we know that we're we're good, right? Peace of mind. Turn on. Just finished that hopper, we're gonna move to number four. Normally you don't do it this way, you guys. You always start with number one. Why do you start, uh, oh sorry, you always empty with number four. Finish with number one. Otherwise you don't have any uh, weight on your drives and you can't get going, but anyway. He said he's good. That means I'm out of here. I'm gonna go back up. Keep working. All right, so uh, Lee's been uh, working overtime on this. He got this out. I actually had a lot of trouble trying to get yeah, that plastic out. That was, uh, yeah. Seized in there. Yeah, it really was. Had to pound it out with yeah. a pry bar. I was having trouble with the two. So now we can get it in reverse. So now we'll take it to the field because we don't want to have a pile of lentils right here. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost my hitch pin. I don't know where it went. That's not the one. No, and no, we're not going to use that one. I just stuck it in there to kind of hold it here. As you see, I got the jack down. It's gone forever. Must have lost it out in the field there. Mike, how do you lose a hitch pin? Because I would have had it in here, and that's fine. They can dangle in there, no big deal. But I don't know if either that or it got misplaced or someone took it. Something happened to it, right, Lee? Yeah. We don't know what happened, though. I don't know. Okay, well, let's, let's get rolling. All right, we got everything cleaned up. Let's... Yes, that pin's gonna get us down to the field, don't you worry. We're not going too far away. All right. And actually do a loop here, we gotta back our way back out. Always helps if you take the park brake off before you do that. Yes, no, I haven't unhooked my backup either yet. Now we're going 
forward. We're just gonna drive down out here. Okay, now we're playing chicken with a semi. Uh, ah. Who has right away here? I I gotta run into an owl. Oh, we got it. No, we didn't. That's an octagonal illusion. Now he's probably okay. You. You want to fight, sir? Watch my legs in you. That's my fighting. You're gonna make me back this big rig. I'm gonna back up for you, buddy. You weigh more than me. I think I can roll backwards because I'm on a hill. I'll laugh if you spin out and you can't get going again. Would be very upset. These are not very manly <laughs> horns. The Trident has an air horn, that's pretty awesome. Oh, we got it. Oh, you got this. Oh, easy peasy. That's Rickles, he's awesome. Okay. Now, where were we? I'm just getting past. He threw his lights on, which I have magnet mounts to put that on top of my roof when we're actually wanting to uh, go down the highway with combines and air drills and all that fun stuff. Thing is, he thinks I'm going that way. And we're going this way. <laughs> so, guys, we just really love what we do. You know, we just, yeah. We just love what we do. We have a great crew, great bunch of guys, and uh, we get to wake up every morning, and yeah, there's stuff sometimes you don't want to go and do, but for the most part, we look forward to what we get to do and have a lot of fun doing it. Just pulling it into the field. Yes. So we don't actually know what's gonna happen here, but in theory, it should reverse that flighting, and we're kind of hoping that we can dump out a little bit of these lentils. So I'm gonna slothly, I'm gonna slothly engage the PTO. Okay, maybe not, hold on, try this again. Oh! Oh, I see! Ah. It just stalled our tractor. You know why? Yeah, because the Redon was on there. Round two. There we go, we just had to get stuff lined up a little better here. Just <laughs> like that. Lifted it way up in the air, sorry you guys can't see anything, but it's going as high as it can because you gotta remember the top half up there isn't even reversing, right? So we're tr trying to get it to jiggle its way down here. If I open my window, I'll smash it because this thing's about to ready to come through my window. So. That's awesome. All right. What we did here is we opened this thing up. We reversed the flighting to get everything out from the two thirds or wherever it broke right up about there. So we got all that reversed. And then the re remaining part of that, remember it's cut in two inside, so we can't really empty it. But the jigging of this, jiggling, I should say, um, when that flighting's banging around in there, we definitely got a lot of that drain because it just kind of kept running itself down. And we also got the Redono emptied out. So we are now ready to rock and roll. We are gonna be heading to town, I don't know, probably not today, with this machine and we're going to drop it off and get it fixed, get some warranty work done. So Mike, uh, how often does this type of stuff happen? Uh, it's only happened twice for the flighting. But the Buellers are kind of known for their gearboxes. We definitely, hold on here, let me stop. That big hunk of cast, that's a gearbox. We've definitely uh, gone through quite a few of those. I'm gonna park this thing back here at the shop just to uh, you know, finish it up so we can uh, take it down the highway here tomorrow. But I know you guys have a few questions. Mike, why do you use these augers? Like, uh, first of all, why aren't you using a belt? 
Uh, actually, it's because augers are a lot faster than a belt. You can get a 16 inch auger and maybe you get a 24 inch uh, wide belt or something, but believe me, the 16 inch auger will double that belt in, in uh, speed and capacity. So that's the reason why we have augers. Well, Mike, why don't you guys have like big leg setups, um, put like a gigantic leg on all these bins and you don't have to, you just have one dumping spot and uh, have a couple main legs and uh, so on and so forth. Well, that's a very good question, you guys. Um, I'm sure that would be awesome when it's working. Don't get me wrong. Like, they're just not very popular up here, to be honest. Like, man, I don't know where you would go. Like, you could probably count all the farms that have legs and pits and everything set up all in one hand. Um, they're really expensive, obviously. You guys would know that, who has them. And uh, I don't know. I guess they're not popular. We've always run this. You know, you can buy one of these for like 70 grand or something. You can have a pile of them. Uh, you can have a lot of augers. And you can replace a lot of flighting in the augers for the price of those uh, legs and pits and stuff. And then when you have a big leg and a big pit and uh, something goes wrong and it malfunctions, well, now we have to shut all the combines where we can just yank this one out of the bin and stick another one in or that one goes down and yank it out of the bin and stick another one in. You know, we don't shut down. So there's, there's pros and cons to having both. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I just don't want to spend the money for them, to be quite honest with you. It's just too much money. I have, I'd rather have other things being honest so okay you guys have yourself a good one i will see you when i see you